Welcome to an overview of the TI Inspire CX handheld. My name is Sean Bird. Um, I teach in Indianapolis, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, where we very much enjoy basketball. All right. What we're looking at here is a TI Inspire CX CAS. CAS stands for Computer Algebra System. Let me just point out the three keyboard sections. Right here are the navigation keys, enabling you to navigate around. And then we have the math and numeric region of the keyboard. And finally, the alphabetic region of the keyboard. Notice how it's A, B, C, D. It's alphabetical order. It's not a QWERTY like uh, other keyboards, and that's because it's allowed on exams. The TI Inspire is allowed on the ACT, AP exams, SAT, PSAT, IB exams. If it has a CAS, the computer algebra system, the TI Inspire CX CAS, is allowed on the PSAT, SAT, AP exams. Another reason why it's allowed on those exams is because it's a touch pad. Slide your finger across this uh, touchpad, and you will see a mouse appear. And then you could, then you can click in the middle. You can press down in the middle, and that will um, act as as a mouse and the click of the mouse. It's not a touch screen; um, otherwise, it wouldn't be allowed on those exams. So, no need to get fingerprints on your screen. Let's take a closer look at computer-like keys. I'm going to pull up a computer keyboard so you can see the various similarities. For example, escape in the upper right-hand corner. Escape in the upper right-hand corner. Um, not too far underneath that is tab. And then there's shift and control. There's notice control and shift. Um, let's see, how about delete is, is a button or this backspace. So those are um, some of the keys I'm going to be pointing out here. For example, there's escape. Underneath that is, is a button called scratch pad. Now, I know you don't have that on a, on a computer keypad, but... Um, the scratch pad is one of the things that uh, enables the TI Inspire to um, serve the purposes of the a graphing calculator. You press it once, calculator. Press it again, a graph page. And so there it meets again the need of uh, someone who gets the TI Inspire um, so that it could be their graphing calculator. And then here's tab. Similar to a computer, when you want to navigate, when you want to um, jump to a field to a field, uh, for example, if we were to go to the settings and we want to change it from degrees to ratings, you could press tab. Shift tab will take you back through a field. Or if you were on a computer and you were on a website and, and uh, wanted to fill out to the various fields, you could um, tab to the next one. Notice the color of control. Notice how it's blue. There are a variety of other things that are blue on the screen. For example, this blue off button. If we press control and on, that will turn it off. Notice the house also. This is a home button. The home or on um, takes you to the home page, takes you to what reminds me of a computer desktop where you have various applications to choose from. Underneath that is dock. When I'm in an application, for example, a PowerPoint, like I'm in here, and when I'm creating the PowerPoint up at the top, it says file, edit, view, insert. If you're in an application like Scratchpad and then you click dock, then you see that you have various options like file, edit, view, insert. Underneath that is the menu button. Menu is where you go if you want to do something. If you're wondering, well, how do I trace um, when you're on a graph page? Then you press menu, and that's how you can do it. it everything is menu driven. If you're wondering how you do something, press menu, and, and you can find it. Then there's um, the delete or the backspace. And finally, here is shift. So those are a variety of computer like keys or some of the similarities and uses of this navigation region. Next up, let's take a look at some of these buttons that have a little arrow on them. For example, trig. So for some upper level teachers, you might be wondering, well, what happened to the sine and cosine and tangent? For some of the lower level um, teachers, like uh, middle school and, and algebra teachers, um, the, the students um, were always wondering, well, what, why does my calculator have sin? And, and what's, a, what's a cos and, and, and tan? Why does it want to get a tan? And so not only um, do we, we get all of these sine cosine tangent, but we also get the, the cosecant and secant and cotangent when we press the trig button. Next to trig, well, above it, um, control equals, you can see that you have a variety of options, the relational keys, the greater than, less than, and the greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. Uh, and, and this one, one of my favorite keys, this little button right here, this icon, what does that do? That is a such that. And so if you press that, then, uh, for example, at the end of an expression, an expression like x plus 3 is such that x equals 2, 
Then the such that says, hey, such a, so it'll plug in the two, such that x equals two. All right. Next up, we have this button right here is the math templates button. Right now, it looks like an absolute value or, or perhaps a piecewise, as well as a lot of other things. This is one of the reasons why I started using the Inspire, is because the math looks like it's supposed to. The square root goes over everything it's, it's supposed to. Uh, an exponent is is up again where where it's supposed to according to uh, the your what you write on your piece of paper, what you see in your textbook. Then here is punctuation, including question mark and factorial, etc. Over here, pi and other Greek things like theta and um, and some other things. Now, now some of them, like this e, you can find right here. Uh, this e and this i are not the same as as um, the e and i over here, and so that's why they need to have a little special spot to differentiate them. So let me talk about the structure of the Inspire. If you were to go to the home page, you see a, a button, choice number two, that uh, you could press that will take you to my documents. In your documents, you might, may have um, a variety of, of options, and so you can open up a document. And those documents contain pages. So, for example, page one and page two. And in those page, sorry, um, problem one and problem two, and in those problems, they can contain various pages. The second thing after the one point one and that point one two three is is the page. The first number tells you what problem you're on. Now, why would you want to have more than one problem? The reason is because if you want to have uh, variables defined in one problem and then have it use the same variables again, and and then they would be um, not defined in a new problem. That's one of the main reasons I've I've found. So we have various pages, and a page can contain um, at least one application or as many as four applications. So here's an example of a graph, a list and spreadsheet, and over here is a notes page. And this one is about to become, well, whatever you want it to be. <clears throat> and then the apps are menu-driven. For example, here are some menu options that you could find if you were on a, a graph page. Let's talk, take a look at the, the applications. So the big apps are Notes. And this says, this is a look at the TI Inspire CX. You have the right to get ex excited. Notes pages can do math. They can do math dynamically where if you change how it's defined, then it will update it below or above or anywhere in there. Uh, calculator, and again, look at those fractions. Aren't those beautiful? Or, or the exponents? They look like they're supposed to. Ah, the graph page, and beautiful color. Notice that uh, we can do inequalities so easily. If you go to a graph page, even on your scratch pad, and you um, press backspace or delete um, one one spot, then up will pop your choice of which inequality you would like to use. We can have the tick marks on the TI Inspire cast um, as, as a pi over four or square root of two over two. That's a nice feature of the, of the cast. And geometry. Notice how we can have pictures included in such things as geometry or graphs or notes pages. And then here's a list and spreadsheet and a data and statistics page. And all the pages are dynamically linked. Here I have the, the data of mass and weight. And over on this, on the data and statistics, I have mass and weight. Isn't that nice? You're not just limited to X and Y or, or not having hardly any text on the screen. And introducing the Vernier data quest, where you can do such things as a motion match um, or or other um, uses, um, plugging in a Vernier sensor. And even if you don't have a sensor, the Vernier data quest is a very useful application. And here's an zooming scratch pad. And these uh, scratch pad for a calculator is quite robust. You can um, even run programs in there from the library. On, on a graph page, on a, on a scratch pad graph page, you can even do slope fields, differential equations. You can do a large variety of different graph types. Now, there's multiple ways to access tools. When using computer software, there's often multiple ways to access features of the software. In a similar fashion, there are often multiple ways of accomplishing a task with the TI Inspire. For example, um, you might have an icon um, on your computer keyboard that looks like this. 
And similarly on the Inspire, we have a control menu. will take you to right click. Um, and that will give you a context sensitive menu. And all the little shortcuts that you enjoy, well, many of the shortcuts that you enjoy on the computer are also available for you on the, the TI Inspire. Uh, one, of, one of people's favorite is Control Z, or do you see the icon above Escape? Control Escape for Undo. You're creating a, a geometry uh, figure, and you're like, hmm, I want to back it up a couple of spots. Then Control Z, Control Z. If you want to go forward again, Control Y will redo, or the Shift Escape. Cut and copy and paste and save your document are all very easily accessible. You don't have to press down, you don't have to hold down the control key. If you press control, then you would notice in the upper right hand corner that it says control when you're on, uh, when you're in an application. And when in doubt, just try it. It's not as though you're going to break it. You can always um, undo. All right, so there was our introduction. And so let's get started and press the, the on button and have a good time with this.